Prisons are established with the objective of reforming the criminals who end up behind bars. But did you know that correctional facilities are an extraordinary ecosystem where the rules of the outside world don't apply? There are some unbelievable prisons around the globe, some of which serve their purpose well, while others might just be making things worse. The worst correctional facilities in the world, housing the most violent and ruthless criminals in history, are so terrifying you wouldn't want to end up there in your wildest dreams. On the other hand, there's also many countries that have adopted a more humane and unconventional approach towards the incarcerated and their prisons will leave you awestruck. But let's be honest, no matter how good it is, a prison is a prison and no one wants to end up there. Here are 15 of the most unusual prisons in the world. Number 1. Guantanamo Bay Detention Camp the infamous Guantanamo Bay Detention Camp is a United States military prison located inside the Guantanamo Bay Naval Base, also known as GTMO and Gitmo, on the Guantanamo Bay coast of Cuba. This military prison was opened after the September 11th attacks and is described as the most nightmarish and cruel prison in the world. It was established by the U.S. President George W. Bush administration in 2002 when the War on Terror officially began. The culture of indefinite detention without trial at Guantanamo Bay has caused quite an uproar against the operations of the facility. It was considered a major breach of human rights and violation of the Due Process Clause of the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments of the United States Constitution. Detention areas here consisted of Camp Delta, including Camp Echo, Camp Iguana, and Camp X-Ray, which is now closed. The first 20 detainees were taken to Camp X-Ray by military guards on the 11th of January 2002. At the time, it was announced that the camp was established to detain extraordinarily dangerous people, to interrogate detainees and to prosecute war criminals. In the beginning, the identities of the detainees held in Guantanamo Bay were kept secret, but eventually the U.S. military were forced to officially acknowledge that they were holding 779 prisoners in the camp. The Bush administration also asserted that the detainees of this camp were not entitled to any of the protections of the Geneva Convention. Many current and former detainees of this prison have reported abuse and torture. Amnesty International went as far as to call it the gulag of our times. The Institute on Medicine as a Profession report of 2013 revealed that the health professionals working in the U.S. military and intelligence services designed and participated in cruel, inhumane, and degrading treatment and torture of the detainees. All ethical standards were ignored during the abusive interrogations. Hunger strikers were force-fed and medical information was used for interrogation. In violation of the World Medical Association and American Medical Association prohibitions, one grave allegation against the camp was of religious abuse of the detainees, especially the Muslim ones. Besides that, Red Cross inspectors and released detainees have alleged torture methods like sleep deprivation, beatings, solitary confinement, humiliating acts, and extreme temperatures. Many of the Guantanamo Bay prisoners were treated so cruelly that they took their lives and their survivors suffered from lifelong physical and psychological trauma. Clinical depression is common in one out of every five Guantanamo detainees. An ICRC report called the prisoner a tantamount of torture. Despite the international pressure, the subsequent U.S. administrations have failed to shut down this facility, and while most of the detainees have been transferred elsewhere or released, 35 still remain at the nightmarish prison. Number 2. Rikers Island Rikers Island is a 413.17-acre island in the East River that contains the main jail complex of New York. It was named after Abraham Riken. The island is home to one of the largest correctional and mental institutions in the world. The complex is operated by New York City Department of Corrections and has an annual budget of $860 million. The staff consists of 9,000 officers and 1,500 civilians who manage more than 100,000 admissions every year. An average daily population of prisoners here is about 10,000 inmates. The Rikers Island prison is notorious for violence, abuse, and neglect of inmates and substandard living conditions. It has attracted increased scrutiny from the press and judiciary. This has caused several rulings against the NYC government 
and many assaults by inmates of uniformed and civilian staff, resulting in serious injuries most of the time. Back in May 2013, Rikers Island was ranked as one of the 10 worst correctional facilities in the United States by Mother Jones Magazine. Violence in this prison has only increased over the years. In 2015, there were 9,424 reported assaults in the prisons. The correctional facility has a reputation for its culture of abuse. The facility has been plagued with controversy over strip searches of detainees brought in for misdemeanors, using inmates as enforcers under a regime called the program, solitary confinement and officer brutality. The prison came under fire during the pandemic too when pictures of the intake cells at the Otis Bantam Correctional Center on Rikers Island were leaked. These pictures show hundreds of inmates languishing for days or weeks in violation of city regulations which require that they be assigned a housing area within 24 hours. As many as 26 men were stuffed body to body in single cells and were forced to use plastic bags as toilets and sleep on the floor. It was inhumane treatment and there was no regard for the social distancing protocols and health of the inmates. Inside these hellish cells, the prisoners barely received food that routinely ran out. There was no access to fresh air, toilets, toilet paper, showers, or medical care. They were also denied attorney visits and trips to the courthouse for hearings. The public outcry over these reports forced the city to take action. In October 2019, the New York City Council voted to close down the facility by 2026. Number 3. Halden Prison Halden Prison is a maximum security correctional facility located in Halden, Norway. And unlike Guantanamo and Rikers, this one is famous for good reason. This is also the second largest prison in Norway. However, it doesn't have any conventional security devices. Halden Prison was established with the objective of rehabilitation in the true sense. Its design simulates life outside the prison. Every cell is 10 square meters and has a flat screen television, a desk, a mini fridge, toilet with a shower, and an unbarred vertical window. A common area is shared by 10 to 13 cells and comprises a living room and kitchen. There's stainless steel silverware, porcelain plates, and a dining table in the kitchen, whereas the living room has a modular couch and a video game system. The prison provides adequate, nutritious food to the inmates, but they are allowed to buy ingredients from the prison grocery shop and cook their own meals. The prisoners remain locked inside their cells for 12 hours a day, but they also receive an incentive of 53 kroner, or about $9 a day, to leave their cells. There's also an activity house. There are practices on jogging trails and football fields. Skill-building activities like woodworking, cooking, and music classes are also offered. The inmates even get a mixing studio to record music, and there's a monthly program broadcast by the local radio station. Halden Prison offers a library with books, CDs, DVDs, magazines, and a rock climbing wall. The prisoners are also given questionnaires to fill out and give feedback regarding their experience and how it can be improved. The inmates are also allowed family and friend visits twice a week for two hours. In fact, there's a separate chalet-style house where inmates can even receive visits from family members who can stay with them for an entire day. No wonder it has been called the most humane prison in the world. Number 4. Committee Maximum Security Prison Kenya has a reputation for the tough and inhumane conditions of its prisons, especially the Committee Maximum Security Prison. It is located in Roy Sambu constituency, or Nairobi County, and in simple terms, is the absolute worst. The prison was built in 1954 and was originally named Committee Downs. It lies in the middle of its 490 hectare estates. During the 1980s and 90s, several political prisoners were held at Committee. The prison is also notorious for the numerous executions carried out inside its walls. This prison was built by the British, who modeled it after an old-school colonial system to house offenders during state of emergency in 1952. The media is severely overcrowded, and the conditions here are unsanitary. Officially, the prison has a capacity of 1,200 inmates, but according to reports, there are between 1,800 and 2,500 prisoners crammed inside it. The health conditions are terrible, with infections like tuberculosis, dysentery, and STDs being common. Kamidi still has its original gallows, though the last execution occurred here in 1987. If the reputation of this prison wasn't tarnished completely, the 2008 riot only made things worse. The riot was sparked by a contraband search and was filmed on cell phone. The footage was also shown on television. 
The prisoners made news again when three convicted terror suspects escaped the prison and seven wardens were then arrested for aiding them. The G Block is particularly famous for its cruel lifestyle. The prison doesn't have a reliable water supply to this day. Number 5. Karandaru Penitentiary Officially referred to as the Sao Paulo House of Detention, it was a prison located in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and was designed and built by Samuel das Neves back in 1920. The prison was operational from 1956 to 2002 and was once considered the largest penitentiary in South America, housing 8,000 inmates. This prison was where some of the most horrifying acts of brutality took place. On the 2nd of October 1992, military police stormed the prison after a riot broke out. More than 111 prisoners lost their lives in this clash. This was a massive human rights violation, and the facility was only a detention center, not a penitentiary which means the inmates there hadn't been convicted or even tried. In April of 2013, 23 policemen involved in the brutal event were sentenced to 156 years in prison each for taking the lives of 13 inmates. In August, another 24 policemen were sentenced to 643 years each. In April 2014, 15 additional policemen were sentenced to 48 years. But in September 2017, the court declared trial on this massacre null, and so far, none of the convicted officers have served their sentences. The inmates of Karandiru lived in dreadful conditions until 2002, when the prison was demolished with all the prisoners inside and was never talked about again. Number 6. San Pedro Prison San Pedro Prison, or the El Penal de San Pedro, is the largest prison located in La Paz, Bolivia. This unique prison is famous for being a society within itself. It's not at all like the traditional correctional facilities. The prisoners here have jobs inside the community. They buy or rent their own accommodation, and most of them serve their sentences while living with their families. The prison inmates also sell recreational substances to the visiting tourists and earn a significant income. They live inside the prison walls with an unusual amount of freedom. The prisoners get to elect their own leaders who enforce the laws of the community. The prison houses almost 3,000 inmates, excluding the women and children who live in the prison with their convicted husbands and fathers. There's also a prison hotel for accommodating additional guests. Although it was built to accommodate only 600 people, this self-run prison is ruled by its inmates. The jail became famous after a novel published by Australian law graduate Rusty Young shed light on the lawlessness and corrupt practices inside the San Pedro prison. The police here only patrols the perimeter to keep inmates from escaping. The governance is entirely in the hands of the incarcerated criminals. The society inside the prison is divided into classes depending on the economic wealth of the inmates. The poor live in dangerous sections with very little resources. The quality of life improves dramatically for the rich inmates who live in gated communities segregated from others and enjoy luxuries like TVs, internet, and even jacuzzis. Each section has a well-structured political system. The administration, who oversee housing, security, punishment, and sanitation. The Bolivian government has been planning to close this prison for years now, but every time the issue is brought up, the inmates riot to protect their homes and community. Number 7. Quincheng Prison the Ministry of Public Security Qingcheng Prison is a maximum security correctional facility located in the Qingcheng village, Xingzhou, Changping District, Beijing. It was built in 1959 with help from the Soviet Union. This is a special prison that houses political prisoners. All party leaders of China have had their political opponents disappear behind the walls of Qingcheng Prison. No journalist is allowed inside, even the judiciary was kept out. All the prisoners in Qingcheng were kept in solitary confinement back in the day. They were not even allowed to interact in the yard. The widow of the infamous Mao Zedong was also imprisoned in Qingcheng until she took her life in May 1991. The prison is often called the Tiger's Cage because of its high-profile prisoners that once used to be powerful members of the society. Many of the inmates are household names in China, but very little is known about the conditions inside the heavily guarded prison. Nowadays, there are group activities and the images are locked up in 16 square meter cells. Some special inmates are granted permission to wear Western suits instead of prison uniforms. The guards are aware of the status of the inmates and therefore keep their hands off them. Different inmates are granted different privileges. For instance, a security chief, Zhu Yongkang, jailed for taking bribes, abuse of power and leaking state secrets, has an isolated compound and a small plot of land to grow his own produce. Number 8. Gitarama Prison 
Gitarama Prison is considered one of the most tragic places on Earth. The hellish jail is located on the outskirts of Kigali, Rwanda's capital. It was built as housing for British workers back in the 1960s, but later it was converted to a prison. It was designed to only hold 400 prisoners, but today is home to more than 7,000. And at its peak during the brutal Rwandan genocide of mid-1990s, it held around 50,000 inmates. There was no place to sit or even lie down in there, and men would just stand wherever they could. Some even slept in the open latrines, soaked in human sewage. The commander back then admitted that it was possibility that some of the inmates were innocent. Even today, the prison environment janced change much. The food supply is scarce, the place is overcrowded, and fights often erupt because of this. Some inmates have even resorted to eating the bodies of dead prisoners in order to survive. With so many men crowded together, the sanitary conditions are poor, and the prisoner population is exposed to many diseases. Bridget Troyon, who provides medical assistance to Rwanda's prisons, has said that half a dozen people die every day. The names barely have access to medical help, which a lot of them need as they suffer from after-effects of beatings. Around 41% of the primers were found to have rotting feet from standing barefoot on the filthy ground covered in fecal matter. According to reports, more than a thousand inmates died in 1995. The stink of this prison can actually be detected from up to a mile away. Number 9. Bangkwang Central Prison Bangkwang Central is a men's prison located in the Nanthaburi province of Thailand, almost 11 kilometers north of Bangkok. It's part of the Department of Corrections and also the site of the Men's Execution Chamber of Thailand. The prison houses many foreign inmates and is regarded as one of the harshest correctional facilities in Asia. The conditions of Bangkwang has caused many prisoners to lose their sanity and even their lives. The inmates on death row are kept chained in leg irons permanently. The prison has its own unique class system called the Chit system. In this, the inmates receive food according to their standing with cantina. A bowl of rice and vegetables is given freely while everything else needs to be purchased. This means the wealthier prisons are able to employ other prisoners as servants who work for them in exchange for more food. In 2013, the Bangkwang Central Prisoner Officers abolished the use of shackles and freed 563 inmates with good behavior from leg irons. In Asia, this prison is often referred to as Big Tiger, whereas the Westerners call it the Bangkok Hilton. As of 2018, the prison had about 6,000 inmates. It's a harsh place to be locked up in, especially knowing that you will be surrounded by inmates sentenced to death or running long sentences for some of the most terrifying crimes. The prison has also experienced four notable attempted escapes in 1932, 1962, 1988 and 1998. Most of these riots were triggered because of the royal pardon. Number 10. Antimora Prison Also called the Central Prison of Antimora, or Mason Central Antimora Antanarivo, this prison is located in the capital of Madagascar and has a capacity to hold 800 inmates, but according to 2019 reports, more than 4,000 detainees were being held here, of whom many were awaiting trial. It is considered one of the most unhygienic correctional facilities in the world, and has therefore been the subject of several documentaries, including Behind Bars, the world's toughest prisons. The lack of hygiene at Antimora Prison has been criticized by international organizations repeatedly over the years. The prison is separated in blocks, and the inmates here are only provided one meal per day, which consists of boiled cassava only. A United States human rights report revealed that the leading cause of death among the prisoners of the Antimora was chronic malnutrition. Another study conducted in 2019 found that almost percent of the female prisoners at Antimora prison are undernourished because of the lack of healthy food, low calorie intake, and a lack of financial assistance. The deplorable conditions paired with overcrowding and scarcity of resources exposed the inmates to an unmitigated risk of infection during the pandemic. Most pretrial detainees are crammed together in dark cells, without sufficient ventilation. Most of them sleep on floors without blankets or a mattress. A huge percentage reported falling ill since their incarceration and having little to no healthcare access. Number 11. Onamchi Prison While most countries around the world struggle with inmate violence and lack of resources for prisons, Japan is facing an extraordinary dilemma. Japan is one of the first countries to face a rapidly increasing number of elderly population. This means the elderly inmate numbers are also on the rise. The above 60 age group is the fastest growing sector in the penal system of Japan. This has caused the authorities to change the prison design in order to make it more elderly friendly. 
As a result, the correctional facilities are looking more and more like senior citizen care homes instead of jail. Omnichi Prison is located in the city of Omnichi, and all the hallways here have handrails to aid the inmate who has difficulty walking. Adult diapers are regularly handed out, and if an inmate coughs or chokes during the meals, a guard will run to them, pat their back, and make sure they're okay. The geriatric wing has no stairs or steps, and prisoners are even given walkers if needed. The Omnichi prisoners work only six hours a day and are given simple tasks like sorting papers, folding laundry, or painting. The elderly prisoners are also less likely to get parole because of the lack of family or homes outside, so they're actually considering these prisons end-of-life care facilities. Also, because the inmates are treated far better than the outside world, so they're not very upset about being locked up in here. Number 12. Camp 22 The Haryang Concentration Camp, or Camp 32, was a prison camp in North Korea that was reportedly shut down in 2012. Its official name was Kusalo No. 22. It was a maximum security prison that was completely isolated from the outside world. Back in the 1990s, there were an estimated 50,000 inmates in the camp, and most of them were people who criticized the government, or the ones who deemed politically unreliable or purged senior party members. All the prisoners were detained until they died and were never released. It was based on guilt by association principle, meaning people were imprisoned together with family members, children, and elderly. It was divided into several prison labor colonies and had an execution site in Seagull Valley at the edge of the camp. The conditions at this camp had been described as harsh and life-threatening. The prisoners were like walking skeletons, dwarfs, and cripples in rags. About 30% reportedly had deformities from tortures, beatings, and other mistreatments. Around 2,000 prisoners had missing limbs and were still forced to work all day long. Each prisoner received just 180 grams of corn twice a day with barely any vegetables or meat. The meat in their diets only included rats, snakes, frogs, and insects. Around 1,500 to 2,000 people died of malnutrition annually. But despite the death population used to remain fairly consistent, meaning more were brought in as the previous ones died, single prisoners lived in bunkhouses with 100 people in one room. As a reward for good work, families were allowed to live together in tiny houses that were in poor condition. All prisoners only had access to dirty and crowded communal toilets. They were made to do hard labor in agricultural, mining, and in factories from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the only holiday that they got was New Year's Day. The guards were trained to have no mercy on the inmates and detainees often died. Many prisoners were taken away every year for major construction projects like tunnels, military bases, nuclear facilities, and more in remote areas, and none of them ever returned. Camp 22 was the hub of human rights violation and closed after 27,000 inmates died of starvation. The remaining 3,000 were transferred to Aung San concentration camp between March and June 2012. Number 13. Black Dolphin Prison Black Dolphin Prison, or Penal Colony No. 6, is located close to Russia's border with Kazakhstan. The penitentiary is reserved for the most menacing and violent convicts, including serial criminals, cannibals, Chechen terrorists, and criminals targeting children. It was named after the dolphin scripture created by the inmates. It sits on the grass at the front of the prison reception. The prisoners of this correctional facility are under surveillance all the time and are watched 24 hours a day through video cameras. The guards make rounds every 15 minutes. Two inmates are assigned to each 50 square foot cell that has three sets of steel doors to keep them isolated. There's barely any interaction between inmates or with guards. They're only allowed outside the cells for 90 minutes every day in a barren concrete exercise yard. While moving them from one part of the facility to the other, they are handcuffed, blindfolded, and forced to walk bent over. This prevents them from learning the prison's layout, interacting with other prisoners, or fighting the guards. This technique is unique to the Back Dolphin Prison. All prisoners here are serving sentences of life imprisonment. According to reports, it houses around 700 of Russia's worst criminals. They are fed soup four times a day, and they are only allowed to read books, newspapers, or keep a radio. Number 14. Solentuna Prison Solentuna Jail of Sweden is considered among some of the most luxurious correctional facilities in the world, and has even won an award for being environmentally friendly. The high-security remand prison in Stockholm won the 2019 Bream Public Projects In Use Award for its range of eco-friendly initiatives. This include an 1,100-square-meter green roof made of plants and a turf, 
a ventilation system that recycles heat from air and a waste disposal room with storage for eight different categories of waste. The building is also wrapped in 6,000 square meters or insulating glass and is therefore temperature regulated. According to reports, prisoners in Solituna have kitchens to cook their own meals. They also get their own couch to watch television. There's also a well-equipped gym. Like most Norwegian and Finnish prisons, this facility is known for upholding the Nordic values of rehabilitation, their argument being that it is prison, not punishment. Sweden's prison system is renowned for being liberal progressive and focuses on ensuring the prisoners don't re-offend once they're out. The prisoners are able to study, participate in university courses, learn skills, and serve their sentences respectfully, which is probably why the prison populations in Sweden have been falling for a while now. Number 15. Diyarbakir Prison The Diyarbakir Prison was built by the Ministry of Justice in Turkey back in 1980. After the September 12, 1980 Turkish coup d'etat, this facility became a martial law prison where torture was an everyday tool used to force a simulation on the Kurds. Around 650,000 people were detained here after the 1980 coup, and most of them were treated cruelly. More than 500 of these detainees lost their lives. The period between early and mid-1980s was called the period of barbarity in Turkey, and at the time the prison was newly built, the prisoners in there were subjected to mind-boggling acts of systemic torture. The superiors haven't confirmed these inhumane practices, but testimonies from hundreds of former names have painted a picture full of violence, psychological and physical abuse, sleep, sensory, water and food deprivation, mock executions, electric shocks, and more. This treatment of Kurdish prisoners fueled the rise of the Kurdistan Workers' Party, which is still fighting against the Turkish state today. Diyarbakir is considered among the worst prisons in the world for its significant number of human rights violations per inmate. President Erdogan has, however, announced the decision to convert this prison into a museum. It has been evacuated by the original owner and has been handed over to the Ministry of Culture and Tourism.